Principles of Sports Nutrition. The CHI Prime Directive regarding protein, and this principle applies to all of the known essentially required micro and macronutrients, is to provide the body with optimum quantities sufficient to supply the biological demand. We know this as supply the demand. So you've got to learn how to supply your demand. Excessive consumption of anything, as well as insufficient intake, always causes health problems. Nutrition imbalance leads to specific health hazards and heightened risk of pathology. Now, protein is more than important. It's absolutely essential. We can't exist without it. But despite irrefutable evidence to the contrary, many people still imagine erroneously that protein is toxic, hard on the kidneys, or in some strange, mysterious way, harmful to the body when consumed in quantities greater than 0.8 grams per kilogram. So let's use our thinking caps. If protein was really that harmful, and it's not, wouldn't there be more direct evidence? Consider the fact that millions of athletes and bodybuilders worldwide have been consuming two to three times more protein than what conservative governments suggest for decades without any evidence of damage. So in fact, the opposite is true. And here, we're reminded of the CHI Costanza principle. Do the opposite. Do the opposite of what convention promotes or suggests in almost everything, and you will live longer and feel better. Now, let me give you five good reasons why athletes need more protein. First, in addition to water and a variety of electrolytes, such as potassium, magnesium, or chloride, nitrogen is also lost through sweating. And nitrogen is derived only from protein in the diet. There's no other source of nitrogen, and we must get nitrogen. Two, protein loss occurs through compression hemolysis, which occurs when erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, are actually crushed through intense muscle contraction. This causes the release of hemoglobin, the formation of free radicals, and the consequent loss of protein and iron. Three, up to five to ten percent of an athlete's total energy supply may be derived through the breakdown and oxidation of protein, and in particular from the branch chain amino acids leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Many athletes push exercise to the point of muscle glycogen deficiency, forcing amino acid reserves or muscle tissue or both to be used as a secondary source of fuel. Exercise also causes muscle to release large quantities of alanine and glutamine, which are mostly excreted from the body and loss. Number four, heavy exercise elicits a stress response which raises plasma cortisol levels. Cortisol inhibits the uptake and transfer of amino acids into muscle cells and stimulates a direct proteolytic effect which increases protein turnover. Cortisol induced muscle catabolism is much more likely to occur on a protein deficient diet. And finally, number five, nitrogen balance can drop well below optimum levels as a result of strenuous workouts. A negative nitrogen balance means that the body has an insufficient intake of high quality protein and essential amino acids. Although the liver and several hormones control nitrogen used for building muscle, it's impossible to build a substantial quantity of muscle mass without maintaining a positive nitrogen balance. So there you go. Protein is essential, protein is important, and protein is safe. Make sure you're getting enough.